In this video, I'm going to go over linear programming. Well, linear programming is given inequalities. We try to find the maximum value that will satisfy this function. So if I graph these three inequalities, we're going to get a shaded region. And we're going to take the intersecting points. It may be 2, it may be 3, it may be 4, it may be 5. We're going to take those points and plug it into this equation or this function and find out where or which numbers, which coordinates, will give us the maximum and the minimum value. Usually the linear programming is very useful in that you could use it to maximize your profit or minimize your cost. Um, but for our purposes, we're not going to be using word problems. We're just going to be using the functions that's given. Let's begin. First. We're going to graph y is less than or equal to negative 8, or y is greater than or equal to negative 8 and less than or equal to negative 2. So if we start with negative 2 and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this will be negative 8. So I'm going to graph y equals negative 2 and also y is equal to negative 8. And what we know is that it's going to be greater than and less than, greater than negative 8 and less than negative 2, which I'm going to be shading it in a minute. Next, I'd like to go ahead and graph the second one. y is less than or equal to x. So if I were to go ahead and graph y equals to x, like so, and it's going to be less than, so it's going to be below. So, so far, the area that we're going to be looking at is right here, which is between negative 2 and negative 8, and also below y equals to uh, x. Here's our third one. First of all, we're going to start with the plus 10. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Down 3, 1 to the right. So, if I connect the dots, there you have it. That's our equation. y equals to less than, uh, y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 10. So again, number one, it's going to be in between here and below this one, which is y is less than or equal to a, x, and also below this one as well, meaning here. So anyways, we end up getting the shaded region of here. There you go. Next, we need to find these four intersecting points or four points of the shaded region that we have. And I'm going to write down the equations that we started with. The equation of this one was y equals 2x. And then the equation of this was y is equal to negative 3x plus 10. And this is y equals to negative 2. And this is y equals to negative 8. Let's begin by finding this point right there. This point is where y equals to negative 2 and y equals to negative 3x plus 10 meets. So we're going to be substituting these two equations, this one and this one, to solve for our x and y value. Since y equals negative 3x plus 10 and y equals negative 2, I'm going to take that negative 2, plug it in here, so we end up getting an equation that is negative 2 equals to negative 3x plus 10. So what I did was I took the negative 2, put it here where the y was. And then if I solve for this, I end up getting um, negative 3x equals negative 12, or x equals to 4. Once we find the value of x, we don't need to find the value of y because we know it already. It's negative 2. So let's go ahead and write down the coordinate of this point, which is 4, comma, negative 2. And let's go ahead and do the next one, which is the one below. Again, same thing. This one, y is negative 8. Intersecting, intersecting with the line with the equation of y equals negative 3x plus 10. So again, I'm going to substitute the negative 8 
into the y here, giving us negative 8 equals negative 3x plus 10, negative 18 equals negative 3x, or x equals to 6. So this point has a coordinate of x equals to 6, and y coordinate of negative 8, so it's going to be 6 comma negative 8. Okay, it's nice that we know the value of y without actually plugging in the value of x. Let's go ahead and find the other two. This one, it's, yeah, this one, it's on the line of y equals to x. Remember, this, this line has an equation of y equals to negative 2. So if y equals negative 2 and y and x are equal to each other, which means that negative 2 equals to x. So we know that the coordinate of this point will be negative 2 comma negative 2. Lastly, this point right there, it's on the equation of y equals to negative 8. Let me go ahead and rewrite that here one more time. y equals to negative 8. Once again, y is negative 8. It's on the line with the y equals to x, which means that x equals to negative 8 as well. So this point has a coordinate of negative comma negative 8 comma negative 8. Okay, so the hard or the difficult part is over. We found the shaded region and then we found the vertices of the shaded region, all four of them in this case. Now we're going to plug in these four points into the function f of xy. Let's do this. First one is f of 4 comma negative 2. So it means to plug in 4 for the x, negative 2 for the y, and it's going to be 5 times 2 plus 14 times by, oh, 5 times 4, that is, which is x, and then 14 times negative 2, and that's going to give us negative 8. Next, we're going to plug in the 6 comma negative 8. So it's going to be 5 times 6 plus 14 times negative 8. And I have my calculator here that I'm going to do it, be doing it on. 5 times 6 plus 14 times negative 8 gives us negative 82. All right, let's go ahead and do the next one, which will be 2, negative 2, comma, negative 2. So 5 times negative 2 plus 14 times negative 2, which will be negative, uh, negative 10 and negative 28, negative 38. Let's do one more, the negative 8, comma, negative 8. which will be, let's take a look, 5 times negative 8 plus 14 times negative 8, which will give us negative 152. Then, from the values that we've gotten, the maximum is this. That's our greatest uh, value that we got. And then, Negative 152 will be the minimum that we got. So if we want to go ahead and finalize our answer, we'll write it over here. Maximum is negative 8 at 4 comma negative 2. And that's how we write it. And then the minimum is negative 152 at negative 8 comma negative 8. So as you can see, linear programming is uh, quite a bit of work. Okay. The good thing is that it's quite useful in real life as well. The key to doing this correctly is to draw the graphs correctly, taking your time. And of course, you need to get the shaded region correctly, but at the same time, getting the uh, 
correct coordinates of the vertices of the shear region is the most important part of the problem.